Hi there, in this video I'll be breaking down the top 10 benefits of developing your own self-funded bootstrap SaaS apps. But firstly, let's quickly define what MicroSaaS is. Um, so it is subscription-based software that solves a specific problem for a niche audience. And it's built by a solo founder or a micro team without external funding. In simple terms, it's basically a bootstrap self-funded side project you can start in your own spare time and grow at your own pace. So just before we get into the list of benefits, if you're new around here, let me give you a real quick intro as to who I am. My name is Rick. I'm a software developer and I managed to quit my crappy nine to five job a few years back after building and scaling a few bootstrap Microsoft apps. I then went on to sell my SaaS apps in a successful exit. And then I started this channel to help you and other software developers get started building your own cash flowing MicroSaaS apps. Great, so now we know what MicroSaaS is and who I am. So let's explore the benefits of developing your own MicroSaaS apps. The first few benefits are really all around freedom. And the first of these is time freedom. So you no longer need to sort of clock in and out as you do for a traditional nine to five job. If you prefer to work in the afternoons or evenings, that's up to you. Um, working on your Microsoft app is asynchronous work. So this is a really refreshing lifestyle change and it opens up all sorts of flexibilities and a freedom that you don't get when you're part of the herd adhering to the corporate nine to five schedule. So let me give you a small but meaningful example for me. So I like to ride my mountain bike a few hours each week. And when I was working in my full-time job, the only chance I'd have would be at the weekend. Uh, the trails were always super busy. And if it was raining, then I'd have to get soaked as that's the only time slot I'd have to go out and ride. And now if the weather is good on a weekday, uh, be it in the morning or afternoon, I can head for the hills and ride the quiet trails with a smile on my face. And it really makes such a difference. Next up, we have location freedom. So as long as you have an internet connection, you can work on your app from anywhere in the world, which opens up all sorts of nomadic possibilities for those wanting to travel and work at the same time. So I've been able to work remotely in Australia whilst I was over there for a few weeks attending my brother's wedding. I wasn't constrained at all. And in fact, I was able to carry on developing my apps and even did a few YouTube and Facebook lives with affiliates whilst I was in Australia. I was also fortunate enough to go to Egypt uh, and do some remote co-working last winter. And we worked in a shared co-working space during the week alongside like-minded people. And in the evenings, we would connect over a few drinks, share experiences and learn from each other. At the weekends, we explored the local sites together and it was a great experience all round. I was able to snorkel in the Red Sea every day and this change of scenery really helped to refresh my creativity and boost my mental clarity. Next up, we have got technical freedom. So it's your choice as to whether you want to build your app in a new programming language or platform, or whether you're just gonna use one that you're familiar with to get your app to market quicker. In my case, for my Chrome extensions, I was able to choose between learning a framework new to myself, such as Vue or React, or just stick with a framework that I knew already, such as Angular. And in the end, I went with Angular just for the speed of delivery. Also worth noting on a technical level, as you're building a new app, there won't be any old creaky legacy systems riddled with technical debt to maintain and build upon. It's really likely you'll be starting with a blank canvas, which is probably a refreshing change from your day job. Okay, just before we head into the next uh, benefit, if you're getting some uh, value from the video, I'd really appreciate if you could consider dropping a like on maybe subscribing so you don't miss out on similar content. Alrighty, so now onto the fourth freedom uh, that you get from Microsoft's development, financial freedom. So if you're an employee and you want to increase your income, your only real option is to work really hard in the hope that your exceptional performance is noticed by your manager and you, you can give yourself a sort of a decent chance of getting a decent pay rise. However, we've all had that sinking feeling in the stomach when your pay review is disappointing to say the least. All those hours of hard work, evenings, weekends, just unrecognized really for a tiny, tiny pay increase. If you contrast that with running your own Microsoft app with its recurring passive income business model, that puts you in charge of your own income. If you want to increase your income, then you need to work on new features, keep your customers happy, work on marketing, etc., and you'll see your income grow as a byproduct of the increased level of work that you put into it. All right, so that's the uh, freedoms. And now we're moving on to the, the benefit number five, which is compounding results. So as you add more features to your Microsoft app, you'll be building upon its existing foundations. Instead of starting from scratch each month, you'll always build on top of the work you've done in the previous months. 
So the more features you add, the more enticing your offer will be for your prospective users. And similarly, your customer base will also grow over time as your early adopters are joined by new customers each and every month. Sure, there'll be some churn, but hopefully in general, you will be trending in this direction. And this compounding of both the growing features of the app and the expanding customer base cannot be underestimated. So in my case, when I first launched the MVP of my Merch Wizard Chrome extension, I did so with a really bare bones app that was functional, but didn't have any bells and whistles to it. However, the functionality in that first version laid the foundations for the app as it is today. And many of the original MVP features haven't needed to be updated since that launch. And in terms of subscribers, I offered a low monthly subscription for early adopters, and many of them are still paying today. So this group of early adopters formed a stable base of monthly subscription income, which I was able to build upon as the app evolved and became more and more uh, well known within the community. Right, next is number six, financial security. So your customers will subscribe to your product on a monthly or an annual basis. And whilst there's always gonna be a certain degree of customer churn, the vast majority of your customers will continue to pay you on autopilot every single month. And it's this automatically recurring income that makes this business model so attractive. So having a baseline of subscribers paying you each and every month, whether or not you're working flat out on the app or you know, whether you're just taking it a little easier, is very reassuring. So if you compare this to uh, freelancing, for example, you effectively start at zero each month with no hours billed. And if you don't put in the hours, you're not gonna get paid. If you think about it as a freelancer, if you're sick, injured, or there's a family emergency, for whatever reason you can't work, then guess what, you, you know, you're not gonna get paid you know, for that time. Um, and also back in my corporate career, something to think about is that I have been through the unfortunate experience of working at a company, the company that suddenly went bust overnight. Everyone lost their jobs, no notice, no pay, and that was a shock to me. And I remember coming back home to my surprise family that day, all my work items in a box, and they were as shocked as I was. Really not a nice experience. So let me ask you which you think is safer, relying wholly on one company or one client to pay your salary or your fees each month, or having hundreds or thousands of customers paying you a small subscription fee each and every month. I don't know which one I'd pick having experienced the uh, the downsides of losing a job and all your income. Next up, we have number seven, minimal startup costs. So the Microsoft app business model doesn't require any upfront costs. And the only thing you're putting at risk is your time. So as it's software you're creating, you don't need to buy any inventory upfront. You don't need to rent big office space. All you need is your computer and an internet connection to get started. You don't even need an advertising budget to successfully launch your Microsoft app. My apps have been promoted purely by via organic methods and I've had no problems in getting them to a point where we can support our family of four. And I certainly recommend that organic methods over uh, paid ads because uh, you can just plow a lot of money into doing that and it can go really badly wrong. You can waste a lot of money. Next is number eight, build it once, sell it to many model. So there's only so many hours in a day and in a nine to five job or a freelance role, your income is capped and constrained by the amount of hours that you're able to work. And that's known as active income where you're actively being paid a set amount for a corresponding amount uh, of time that you put in. And your earning potential is always gonna be constrained by the number of hours in that day, week, or month. And if you contrast that with uh, building your own, your own digital products, such as a Microsoft app, then you're no longer being paid per hour, but rather being paid uh, for the results of your efforts in building a top-notch product. This is a secret to how you can achieve a disproportionate income from the time that you invest. For example, take a look at this relatively modest looking Chrome extension called Closet Tools. It's run by a solo developer and it nets him a disproportionate $35,000 in monthly recurring revenue. The leveraging of your time is the true power of the Microsoft business model. And I go into more detail on this particular app that we're talking about on, in Closet Tools as a case study in my Microsoft handbook. You can get hold of this on my website and get hold of it on Amazon if you want. It's uh, 12 chapters and it takes you uh, all the way from idea to exit at a high level. So be sure to check out the links in the description below and uh, pick up a copy yourself. Okay, next up, we have number nine, a direct connection with your users. So there's nothing quite like having a open and direct 
connection with your app's users. They will let you know what features they love, what they'd like to see next, and they'll also spread the word about your app to other potential customers. In my old day job as technical director of an insurance software house, which was extremely boring, uh, I was so far removed from the end users, it was difficult to get any meaningful feedback from them. If you contrast that with the Microsoft app world, where I was interacting directly with my users every single day, it was brilliant. It gave me uh, direct access to a continuous stream of useful insights uh, into my users' thoughts and desires, and that really helped to like, really mold the, the product roadmap for my apps. Uh, in my case, though, I took this a step further and organized an entire conference for my niche's user base. You don't have to do this, but uh, it's something I did as I was in the Merch Facebook groups, and I realized there's only one conference held annually in Seattle in the US. And I figured it might be a good idea for me to arrange a conference in, the, in Europe. And so the Merch UK conference was born. And despite the stress of organizing a conference for 80 plus people, um, which in the end had several attendees from the US and Europe, as well as the UK, uh, the benefits sort of really outweighed the stresses. I was able to increase my profile in the community, uh, earned trust that my app was run by a credible real person. I was able to create relationships with multiple Facebook group owners and network with other app owners as well. And last but not least, I was able to meet many Merch Wizard users uh, and I was able to pick their brains in person, which has given me invaluable feedback over the years. Right, next, number 10, entirely self-owned business. So as your app is likely to be bootstrapped or self-funded with no outside investors, you're in complete control, basically. So worst case, you may have borrowed some money from family and friends to get the first version out the door. But as it's an entirely self-owned startup, you won't have investors breathing down your neck with ambitious and sometimes unrealistic growth targets. That means you'll never be working in a super stressful boom or bust scenario, and you can go at the pace that's right for you. So it's completely up to you whether you want to do it all on your own or form a small micro team as I did. And it's up to you how you promote the app, whether you offer uh, seasonal discounted sales, how you work with affiliates in your niche, what percentage commission you offer, how you leverage social media, whether you're gonna be on Facebook and YouTube and things like that, how you handle support, whether you're gonna have a knowledge base, a ticketing system or handle it on email. You know, these are the decisions that you'll be making as you're in charge now. Okay, so final thoughts from me. From time and location freedom, as well as a fresh sense of independence, there's a lot to gain by developing Microsoft apps. For me personally, I've been able to earn multiple six figures in subscription income, quit my day job, um, and with that, I was able to banish with all the sort of pain of the day job, the pointless meetings, the office politics, the chaos, and the firefighting. I can now work when I want, where I want, and in whatever technologies I want. I have more time to spend with family. I have a better connection with the users of the apps that I develop, and I have way more financial stability um, than I've ever had you know, before. I'm in complete control of that and my destiny myself, which is a great feeling. And I went on to earn multiple six figures when I finally exited and sold my Microsoft app. So I'll go into that in more detail in my uh, Microsoft handbook. Again, links in the description if you want to pick up a copy of that either on my website or on Amazon. Okay then, so to summarize, you get four different types of freedom, time, location, technical, financial freedom. You get compounding results in terms of the features of your app that you're building on each and every month. You get comp compounding results in terms of the subscriptions income that you're gonna get. That gives you financial security. There's minimal startup costs, minimal risk. You get a direct connection with your users. It leverages this build it once, sell it to many uh, model. And you are the boss. You are you know, in complete control of your destiny. So it's low risk to get started, but as I've detailed, you can get uh, this high potential for like, big exits as well in SaaS. Right, next, don't forget you can pick up that copy of the Microsoft Handbook on my website or on Amazon. You may also wanna check out this video I have done on the 10 steps to building your own uh, Microsoft app. And uh, I'll link to that video now. And if this will go to the next one, I'll just run through uh, what we've got uh, available on this channel if in case you're interested in subscribing, if you're interested in Microsoft's passive income, quitting the day job, or uh, Chrome extension development, that's what I'll be covering on the channel. We also have a Facebook group, um, which is called the Microsoft Mastermind. I'm in there every day uh, answering questions and helping people take their first steps. So if you want, you can join that. That's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Microsoft Mastermind. So hopefully I'll see you in the group or you'll see me in future videos. Okay, that's it for now. I will see you in the next video. Cheers for now.